In my last couple of videos, I dealt with the issue of excess crankcase pressure on the Milwaukee 8 motor. But what about this issue of crankcase vacuum, and is that something that we need? What's up, everybody? As I mentioned in the intro, this is my third video related to the blow-by issues on the Milwaukee 8 motors. In my most recent video, which I'll link to here, I added an external crankcase vent solution, and that seems to be working really well. I'm very happy with that, and it's doing a great job so far. Immediately before I did the crankcase vent, I added an external breather modification to the Arlen Ness Monster Sucker intake. And after posting both of those videos, I got some feedback that indicates that by doing both of those solutions at the same time, I may have removed a really important component of the way that motor is designed to breathe. In the crankcase breather video, I talked about the check valve that I added, and I mentioned this issue of vacuum that I've heard people talking about. I'm still debating whether or not there needs to be a check valve of any sort in the crankcase venting solution. And that's really the heart of the matter of what I'm talking about today. Let me just tell you that I was really hesitant to post this video only because I found it difficult to come up with verifiable facts about this whole issue of crankcase pressure and crankcase vacuum. But nonetheless, I wanted to take some action on this and see if I could do a bit of testing to assess this issue of crankcase vacuum and see what I came up with. Like I've said before, I'm not an expert on these motors. I'm just trying to learn as I go and share those learnings with you along the way. It sounds as though the issue has to do with over oiling of the cylinders and that vacuum being present in the crankcase helps to pull the oil down on those cylinder walls to alleviate that issue. And getting some comments from viewers, by adding the external breather modification to the Arlen Ness intake, I may have removed that source that would add a vacuum to the crankcase. By the way, if you're new here, Thanks so much for stopping in to check out this video. My name is Ron Chanal, and here on this channel, I tackle projects of all sizes related to the bikes I ride, and I give you as much information as I can about those projects and what I learn along the way. So be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and enable all notifications so you'll be alerted whenever I post future videos. The bike has been running great with both of these mods in place. So with the Arlen Ness external breather mod and the crankcase vent in place, bike is running extremely well and I've got no indications of any sort of issues happening and that's with riding it pretty hard and riding it as I normally would but with some of the input that I got along the way I just wanted to do a bit of investigation to make sure that there wasn't something else going on there that could be causing a problem further down the road. So I decided to do a bit of research on my bike to see if I could learn anything about this crankcase vacuum, measure it in any way, or just learn anything about it and come up with some some data based on what I see happening on my particular configuration. There was only so much I could do with trying to get high RPM readings and certainly wasn't able to sustain those high RPMs with it sitting on the kickstand and, and trying to take all these measurements. Maybe I could do that on a dyno or something like that. Maybe that's something we can check out in the future. But at this point, I had to keep it simple and just measure the vacuum at idle or at relatively low RPMs, you know, 2000, 2500 RPM, something like that. So I started by removing the right hand side cover so I could get to that hose barb for the crankcase vent solution, pop that hose off of there. I then went and borrowed one of the gauges from my old school carb synchronization kit so that I could have a gauge that would measure both vacuum and pressure. And I put a hose for that vacuum gauge onto the hose barb on the crankcase. Fired it up, took a look at the gauge, and I saw no vacuum whatsoever. At this point, remember, I have both the crankcase breather solution and the Arlen Ness intake breather solution on simultaneously, and people have said that that removes the vacuum source for the crankcase and that there would be no vacuum in the crankcase based on that. So the next step for me was to reverse the Arlen Ness breather modification to see if I could get any different results with the crankcase vacuum. So I took the intake off the bike, removed the two grub screws that were blocking those passages on the intake, capped off the hose barbs, reinstalled the intake, put everything back together, fired it up again. The gauge still read no vacuum whatsoever. What I would have guessed I would see is some sort of pulsation or some sort of oscillation in the needle to indicate that there was a change in pressure and vacuum as the engine was idling. 
but I did not see that at all. I could feel air coming out of the line. So I knew there was indeed positive pressure inside the crankcase, but it wasn't enough positive pressure to really come up with a meaningful reading on the gauge. So just as sort of a reality check on that, I did the plastic bag trick on the end of the hose, taped it up, cranked it up, and you can see that it inflates that plastic bag like a balloon quite readily. So obviously there's positive pressure in the crankcase, but there's no indication of any sort of pulsation with momentary vacuum. And obviously the pressure is the most consistent aspect of it because it certainly fills that bag up quickly and stays inflated. So then I was curious about how strong the vacuum would be in the intake. So just as an experiment, I found a capped off hose barb on the intake itself, pop that cap off, put the hose for the vacuum gauge onto that barb, cranked it up, and there's an obvious vacuum on the intake. So what does all this mean? All I can say is there's no noticeable or easily measurable difference in crankcase vacuum at idle or slightly elevated RPMs using both of these modifications at the same time or using just the crankcase ventilation solution. Maybe there's a better way to test this. Maybe there's a different approach I could use to trying to measure or detect that crankcase vacuum. What do you think? Drop in a comment and let me know if you have a better way to test this or a recommendation on a different tool or a different technique to use on this. I'd love to hear that and I'd love to try it and see if I get any different results. I'd really like to find somebody at Harley or at one of the dealerships that can confirm this with some factual information. I'm still on the hunt and hope to come up with somebody soon. And if you have any information on this, please do drop it in the comments and let me know whatever you know about this and the source of that information because I really am trying to deal with this in a factual manner Manner, not just based on hearsay and assumption, but I really want to get to the facts about this issue and share that with you all as well. And let me know if you've tested this yourself. Have you been able to test this whole issue of crankcase pressure and crankcase vacuum and measure it in any way and come up with any sort of meaningful results? Definitely let me know about that in the comments as well. So where does that leave me at this point? Well, I'm going to gather some more data. I'm going to leave the bike as is, meaning I've reversed the Arlen Ness external breather modification, but I'm going to leave the crankcase ventilation solution in place. I'm going to ride it for a while and I'm going to remove those intake bolts periodically and check them for residue because I want to make sure that I don't get additional oil buildup there, which is the whole point of all of these projects that I've tackled is to minimize or eliminate the blow by and avoid blowing that oil into the intake which would then collect on the tops of the pistons. So I'm going to monitor that over the next month or so and I'll post a follow-up video to share the results of those tests and the results of riding that for a while with just the crankcase ventilation solution and we'll see how those bolts look which will be an indicator of how much blow by is or is not still happening. And if I come across any information along the way on a better way to test this for vacuum and explore that crankcase vacuum a little bit more, or I get some good, reliable information that I can add to this, I'll include that in the follow-up video as well. If you found this video informational or useful, please do hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. That really helps the channel out a lot, and I certainly do appreciate it when you do that. And if you're new here, please do consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell and enabling all notifications so you'll be alerted whenever I post future videos. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the ride. I'll see you next time.